can go out on the fly and define a start finish line. So you mark that with GPS coordinates. The next time you pass those GPS coordinates, it counts it as one lap. And then it will continue beyond that. And it will save that start finish line for as long until you set another one. So the next time you come back to the car, if you're on the same track, it will remember that that's your lap. It will remember that's your start finish line. You can review your sessions. It'll store those sessions on your car, and it'll, it'll save them by date, and you can go back through and you can watch the video in the car. And again, you can change, choose your video overlay in the car. I'll talk about that in a minute. So, choosing the overlays, it's that simple. We have no overlay, which we're also calling touring mode, uh, sport mode, track mode, and performance timer. So, what will you see when you look at each one of those? Again, you get four distinct pictures and, and what you can see in the video after the fact. This data is then stored on top of the video. So if you don't want any data, you're going to choose no overlay and you'll just have this. That's most useful for a nice scenic drive if you're going down the California coast or something or driving the tail of the dragon, not really doing a lap. You want to just see what you've done. Tour mode is really good for that because it doesn't have any of the overlays. If you're looking at track map and you want to see the actual map, you can, you can look at the track mode. So let's zoom in here a bit. Track mode, this is the maximum data overlay that we show in any of the videos. So you've got, you can see once you've created one full lap, once you've run around the circuit past our finish line, it'll start showing you where you are on the lap as you're scrolling through the video. Obviously speed up at the top, brake and throttle up here as well gear position, so what gear you're in during that second of the track, your lap time, so it's a running lap time each time you do, it'll start back over at zero the next time you cross the start finish line, so you can see where you're at for this particular lap. Lateral and longitudinal G's, G bubble down in the corner, RPMs, and then your steering angle over here as well. So that's track map. If you want a little bit less clutter, a little bit less information staring in the face on the video, you go to sport mode which gives you speed, gear, RPM, and lateral Gs only. So a little bit less information, but still some good stuff to know if you're out having, having a lot of fun in your workout. And then performance timer. For those of you who like to do drag racing, this is the page you're going to want to use. You've got 0 to 60, 0 to 100, your quarter mile time, and 0 to uh, 100 and back down to 0 if you're ever interested in the, in the breaking test as well. And then watch your RPMs, speed, what gear you're in, and obviously if you're drag racing, that throttle should be indicated all the way up to all the way full green. Um, and you can also see down here in the corner, to tell you what you did with your launch control settings. So again, this is really useful if you're out drag racing. It'll show you how well you did uh, at each of those splits. And then tour mode. If you're in a nice October day in Milford, Michigan, this is what the picture looks like. Kind of gray, typical day in Michigan. But again, nice sunny day, fun scenic drive. This is a, a cool mode, and you can, again, you can record up to 13 hours of data on a 32 gig card, and you don't have to have your significant other sitting there with your iPhones holding it for the whole trip. Or you don't have to worry about fiddling around, did you have the settings right on your GoPro or other aftermarket camera? This is all built in. Guess what? It's all factory warranty as well because it's installed right here at the plant. So all this system is now in the car and you don't have to do anything else. So again, once you've recorded the video and the data, you have the opportunity to go back in. Once you come to uh, and come to zero miles per hour, put the car in park where you're sitting still, you can review the videos in car. We don't have any live showing of the video while you're driving because that's not very safe. The insurance company said no, rightly so. But you can watch them while you're sitting still. On that nice infotainment screen, you can watch that high def video right there and you can select which one you want to look at. On top of that, now you've got this data that I talked about. What does the race team do? What does a race engineer do with the data that they collect? Cosworth has taken that toolbox, is, is the name of our analysis program. 
We've taken that program that you see the Pratt and Miller guys with Corvette Racing using, and they've got six guys sitting there in the pit, pit stand working on data, looking at telemetry, working on all that. We've taken that and made that something that you and I can use. You can use, you don't need a master's degree in engineering to be able to use the software. Breaking it down into the basics. What's going to help you become a better driver? We're going to show you the video. You can compare laps. You can compare one lap to another. You can see, you can compare it to your instructor, to your lap. With the video, you can see, oh, you were five feet wide at the apex compared to where you should have been. You can look at where you were at on different points along the track, just on video. That's step one, in my opinion. Step two, you start looking at what were your hands and feet doing. You can look at steering, throttle, braking in the data, see what you were doing at different points on the track compared to what the instructor wanted you to do. And then you can look at statistics. If you do a long run, several laps, you can look at what were my tire temperatures, what was my engine temperature, what was the water temp during those runs, did it affect my lap time. You can look at how consistent your laps were because we'll show you every lap, what your lap time was, what your average was, and how far off on that you were. <clears throat> so I'll show you just a few of the screens from Toolbox here. I'm here all day tomorrow, or after my talk here, I've got a Windows Surface tablet. I'll be happy to walk you through one-on-one, -on -one just looking at Toolbox and can walk you through some of the screens that are available, because it, I didn't want to mess with trying to show video and trying to play with the program live, because you saw some of the technology issues, and it can be kind of cumbersome trying to do it live. But I'll be around all day tomorrow, and I'll be standing around and be happy to walk through on a tablet and show you how easy it is to look at video and data. And it's kind of fun because you can bust on Tommy Milner a little bit. I've got one of his laps against a journalist, and Tommy was only like a second and a half faster around Sebring than the journalist. Don't tell him that I told you that because the journalist was actually Alex Lloyd, former IndyCar driver, who is now a journalist. But it was close. So this is one example. You can look at video uh, comparing two laps. And again, you see it doesn't matter. They don't have to be with the same overlay. We're comparing laps with different overlays here. And again, this particular chart shows you your accelerator on the top line, your braking, and your steering act of what you were doing with your feet and your hands, as I said. Were you too active with your hands and feet? Too much of steering input? Did you, did you have something go on? and it's synchronized with the video. So you can hit play on the video, it'll scroll through, and the cursor will move along the chart and show you exactly what point on the track and what you were doing with your hands and feet at that moment on the track when you saw the bird fly in front of you and you can't. That's it. And, and the video is that good. One of these videos was done uh, at our office in the UK. They went out to an airbase. And I thought it was really bad video until I paused it and realized it was a bird that took off from the side of the track and, and there was a little moment that uh, steering did one of these. So it's that, it's that quick to respond and it's that detail. This again is one of the most useful pages in my mind for the average driver who's trying to learn how to get better, how to improve laptops. It's all about consistency. So it shows you your best for that hour. And this can go across and it'll continue on. If you run 20 laps, this will continue to drive it across and you can have as many laps in your audio as you want. But what it does, it shows you your out lap, shows you lap one, two, three, etc., and then shows you your in lap. Some of the things you want to look at is what was your lap time, how consistent was it, what's your max speed in each lap, uh, your time on accelerator, and time on brakes for those different laps see exactly what you were doing, how consistent were you, and did you improve throughout that hour. This one's also really good because it, you can see if I'm comparing two laps, we, we have a link if you're online, whether Wi-Fi or hardware, when you launch Cosmic Toolbox, it'll go out and grab a big map, and it'll show you exactly where the track was, overview page it'll show you here's the full view of the track you're in Sebring wherever you are you're in Ohio it'll zoom in and show you the track that you ran and then it'll show you the other options when you go to the corners tab it'll actually go in and zoom in to each corner 
All the typical big map tools are available. You can zoom in, zoom out, drag this along. If you have the video playing, the two dots start chasing each other around the track. And you can see where did I gain and lose time relative to that reference lap that I'm, that I'm looking at. You can see the difference in the line. You can see was I wider on the turn here, a little bit tighter on the apex, what happened with those different points along the track. You also have statistics. What were, during that corner, what was the max lateral G's? What was the minimum speed in the corner? How much was I on the accelerator? How much was I on the brakes? If you're honest, looking at the straightaway over here, obviously you don't look at uh, max lateral G's, but you look at maximum speed. And you look at, did you get to 100% thrall on that straightaway? So you can look at all these different statistics. It's got a comparison across the bottom. What was your steering angle at that, minute, at that point on the track? How much steering input did you have? What was your speed? What gear were you in? And how much time gain or loss was there between the two laps at that point on the track? Tons of different ways that you can compare. You can look at, you can look at these in absolutes, or you look at them in deltas. So this would say 50.1, and that would say plus 2.1. You can look at it if you want to do the math, or do you want to see the raw numbers. You can look at it either way. Um, you can compare by time. So at this point in the lap, these are where the two cars were. If you look at it at distance along the lap, it'll show you the separation between the two cars a little bit different. Again, looking at corners, you can also look at a corner with the chart instead of with the statistics. Here you've got accelerator, brake, and this bottom squiggly line, which once you get a little more advanced using the program, you'll start to recognize, okay, what am I doing with brake and throttle? But this is your time delta. Where do they gain and lose time to that reference lap? And you can see, and actually this one is, uh, th this is Tommy versus the, uh, versus the pro, and you can see at one point, uh, the journalist was, was faster, he was ahead of Tommy, and then Tommy gained it back through the, the latter sections of the lap. And you can see the different line they ran through that particular corner. And you can see how that, how that affected their drive and what all that did. Again, a lot of different ways to look at it. A lot of different ways to see, you know, there's some videos, stats, different corners, and you can break it down different ways. I'm happy to walk through the program. Again, it's, it's intended to make you a better driver by helping you get more consistent and understanding what are you doing in the car and how does that affect your speed, how does that affect your feel, and how does that affect your lap time at the end of the day. So really, the best way to show you is to walk through the program, but some of the keys, again, two button pushes, you're recording your, your data and your video and the audio, and it's all synchronized. So as you play back that video, see it, you can drag it, you can stop it. It's a MP4 file, it's a compressed MP4 file. So if you're familiar with video editing, and you're a user of things like Facebook and things like that, you go grab the video, splice it down to the last 20 seconds you want to show where you pass that guy, you blew by the viper, you want to show that 20 second segment, you put, post it to Facebook. Now you've also got proof. You can claim, hey, I just ran this lap time in mid-Ohio because my buddy with the stopwatch said so. Yeah, who's gonna believe that? Now you've got it recorded. And it's gonna know because you cross back over the start-finish line, you recorded, it's gonna know and you're gonna have proof that's your lap time in mid-Ohio. Take a screenshot of that, throw that up on Facebook and just tell all your friends. Those are some of the fun ways to use the program that we're really excited about, really, really thrilled to be a part of the Corvette program as Cosworth. Again, I'm here for the rest of the day and all day tomorrow. Be happy to walk you through because we're really excited about the program. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. Oh, wait for the microphone. <laughs> How many? Oh my gosh. Can you hear? Hey, Steve. Uh, volume. Are you able to turn off the volume uh, in there while recording? Will it will it pick up your voice? You know, we're, we're you know, there's only so. Oh my God you can have, you know. <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh -oh. um, right now, you cannot disengage 
the volume, but when you're playing back, obviously, just turn the volume down is, is, is what I would tell you to do. Uh, what I think it's also very useful for is driving schools. You can have your driving instructor do the lap and do a voiceover. You're going to be in third gear in this corner. You're going to take this, your apex from here. You're going to break with 200. And you watch that. You go back to your hotel room at night, watch his video, learn it, and then you go back and you can drive that. So the voiceover is something that we're really keen on. Uh, the microphone is sensitive enough to pick up the engine noise so you can hear some of the revs and then hopefully hear some of it. Oh my God, that was awesome. Type of comments as well. But if you... So you can't disengage it without notes. The only way you can do it then is to edit it somehow yes. before you put it up. If, if you said something you yeah. might not want to say. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Or if my driver can start to hear the screens. <laughs> That's okay. Two bucks off crap. I'm sorry, say that one again? The toolbox is up for a tap uh, Right now it's not, but that's in the works, and hopefully within the next probably 12 months we will have it Apple compatible. Right now it's Windows based. Is it, excuse me, is it possible to set a different start and finish line, such as uh, for autocross use? One, uh, that is in hopefully in one of our future releases. The, the spec we were given was to create a start finish line, a single start finish line. But we recognize a lot of you do autocrossing or rallying, you need a separate start finish. So uh, right now you can't set another finish line, um, but that is in our, in our list of things to, to look at in the future. Two questions. Uh, first, what's the next MSD card size that you'll support? And second is with any electronic device. Are you going to make this upgradable to like 10 to P at some point? First question, will support any size class 10 SD card that you can buy and put in the slot? It'll report. That's the other thing that I should mention. None of this video, audio, and data is recorded onto a hard drive and stored anywhere in the vehicle. So we saw, when we launched this in January, we saw a lot of comments, oh, another way for insurance or police to come look at me. It's your choice put an SD card in and hit start record for it. And that's the only place it's recorded, it's on that SD card, it's not stored in the car. But it will support any size card that you put in the slot. Uh, will it be upgraded? We made the conscious decision to go 720p because it's the file size, so it's getting considerably larger when you, when you go much bigger. And what we found for a camera that was automotive grade to pass all of the environmental and other tests we had to do, that was the best camera we could find for dollar capability and file size. So that's why we chose that. Right now we're not looking at going to 1080p. I think if you saw the video, you'd be hard pressed to, to see where an added resolution would really make a huge difference. That's true. It's only 20 is probably. Will the system be upgraded for like a future asset to try to use technology? Could possibly, yeah. Could possibly, yeah. That brings up the next question. How modular is the system? How upgradable is it? Also, you just tag the can bus, or is there ever actually some other end for the telemetry? You're just kind of messing with that and we can talk about the deal later. It's right now, right now it's, it's, it's all factory installed and it's, it's components supplied by Cosmos. So it's the camera, the module, and the GPS antenna that really we're not looking at any upgrades to that. Uh, it's they're paired together, so we have talked about maybe in the future um, adding the capability of it to accepting a second camera, but that's not what's coming out for 2015. Uh, who knows where the future can take us on that direction for sure. Any other questions? What is the weight in the system, please? The camera is about 50 grams. The module itself is less than 500 grams. So it's pretty lightweight, uh, you know, about pounds. And then the GPS antenna, how big is it? Where is it located, please? In the Corvette, the GPS antenna is roughly two and a half inches in diameter, and it sits up uh, on the wheelhouse. So it's got clear line of sight through composite material, so through the carbon fiber fender, so it sits up uh, like the wheelhouse area. 
But it's, again, it's about two and a half inch to have it. It's not visible from the outside. No, 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 it's all buried inside the car. Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. What kind of cost are we talking about? Harlan's in the back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> the cost of the system, I don't think it's been announced yet what the cost for the, uh, the option would be. What? So, so Harlan, right now the plan is it will be combined with the, the NAV system. So you purchase the NAV system and the PDR as part of that package as an option, but they haven't announced pricing for 2015 yet. Uh, yes, uh, when you're instructing a student with helmets on, full face, you know, we'll have a input for an extra microphone that we can tap into our uh, communicators. We do not at this time have an extra input, but that's a good thought to, for us to think about for the future. Yeah, absolutely. Good thought. Anyone else? Should you talk? I know this might be rhetorical, but I'm assuming the toolbox is included with the option. Yes, yeah, toolbox is, is included. What the intent is, is that we will, uh, Cosmos is going to host the website. Um, it'll be linked from Corvette.com or some similar site. We'll tell you where to go. It'll link to the Cosmos website where you'll download a toolbox. We're also going to have instructional videos, to your point, instructional videos, frequently asked questions. Uh, and, and a way for you to get support for, okay, what am I doing here? What am I really looking at? What's the step-by-step -step for, I've got this data on my card, now what do I do with it? We're gonna, we're gonna provide those instructions on the website. Follow-up question to that, will the software be available to students people that don't necessarily have the option to have drive coaches who are working with people with some yeah, the, the, the software is going to be available for download on the website. It's not, it's not license controlled, it's not dongle controlled, there's no security on it. So yeah, you could download it, and then you can take your friends. If you don't have the Corvette that has the PDR, you can still take your friend's data and, and look up and look at it in the software. Yeah, that is part of the plan. Anyone else? Well, that's pretty damn remarkable, huh? <laughs>